The UN publishes the World Economic um, Situation and Prospects every year, and this is to, to highlight what is happening in the global economy, um, specifically the downside risks, to um, provide a forum for debate and also to hold people accountable, um, the policy makers across the globe, to create accountability in the policies and the decisions that are being made, um, because it is the people at the bottom who suffer the most when bad decisions are made. It's no news to anyone that the global economy is growing slowly. The African economy and Southern Africa are all exhibiting poor economic growth. The highlights to take away from the report are that um, globally it's um, geopolitical tensions and um, trade disputes that are creating a lot of anxiety and jitters amongst global economies. And the global economy um, has got some severe downside risks, largely through the main players of the US and China and the various trade disputes that are going on there. Um, I think the important takeaway from this report is that um, economic growth is actually not the be all and end all because the problems uh, we are facing in South Africa specifically and across the globe we cannot grow out of. The, th the challenges to take away from this are that our policy makers need to be more forceful and more um, rigid in their decision making. We need to have clear cut policies, we need to have certainty and our readers can um, hopefully exercise their democratic processes um, to ensure that we, we see leaders who are um, able to implement the policies that they design. What I'd like to add is that um, it is not the government's job to grow our economy by creating jobs. Um, the government should be creating an enabling environment for our engine room, which is our businesses and our workforce. They should be doing this by creating good quality education and skills and vocational training for our workforce and a good productive environment for businesses through the provision of services and through um, policy certainty to improve business sentiment. And that is our engine for growth in South Africa. In terms of the South African context, I've mentioned some of the challenges facing South Africa and we all know them. Um, it, it doesn't necessitate repetition of what's being said on a daily basis in the press. Rather, let's talk about the hit list for South Africa, the policy hit list, what needs to happen, what are the challenges. We need, obviously, higher growth rates. Um, however, as I've repeated a number of times, we cannot grow out of our problem. So higher growth rates are not the, only, the one and only thing that we can identify as a target for South Africa. High accelerated growth needs to be matched by higher numbers of high quality jobs. Not necessarily only salary earning jobs, but space for companies, for entrepreneurs, for SMMEs to make employment happen. So we need growth that is matched by employment. We also need to see decreases in inequality in South Africa. We need to see effective implementation of our social protection systems. We need to see a consolidation and a management of our debt. We cannot continue to have rising debt levels in the fiscus as well as in the um, private sector. We need to increase our tax base, which SARS is well aware of and hopefully targeting. We need to have a strong and trustworthy rule of law. Our business climate needs to be stimulated. Business is the engine room for growth in our economy. At present, we are looking to the government to grow our economy by employing people, by producing goods and services, by being the number one client to do business with. The government is not the grower, if that's a word, of the economy. The business sector is the engine room of our economy. The government should be a facilitator, an enabler, and a protector of the rest of the economy. But we should not be looking to our government to fix all of the economic woes purely by just creating more and more and more jobs. There needs to be diversification in our economy so that we are not so um, easily harmed by global changes in demand. And lastly, and most importantly, we need to restore the reputation of our government and our policy makers. Because there is hope for South Africa. 
If we implement a coordinated fiscal, industrial and labour market policy environment, there will be macroeconomic change. And that macroeconomic change will bring about inclusive, participative economic growth where every individual will be able to productively share in the income of the country and to contribute to the growth of the country. However, it's going to be a hard task for our government due to the pushback that we are seeing at the moment, the resistance that we are seeing at the moment to change, but nothing, easy, nothing good ever came easily.